Hello, everyone. Uh, now, uh, this is going to be theme six. We are still with uh, language acquisition, and this is uh, part two in theme six. In, the in, in part one of uh, theme six, just to remind you, we talked about, uh, uh, we, we discussed some terminology related to language acquisition, demystifying terminology, some terminology relevant to language acquisition. And uh, another point we talked about it, it's, it's about the difference between language acquisition and language learning. In this second part of theme six about uh, language acquisition, we shall move to talk about uh, 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 one approach, uh, one approach that explains uh, the process of language acquisition. That is the behavioral approach. By the way, we are going in this uh, theme, theme six, talk about the two main approaches that are uh, common uh, that, and that try to explain how we humans come to acquire our first language. The behavioral approach on one hand and the cognitive approach on the other one. Now, let's start with the behavioral approach. Uh, before I start uh, uh, telling you what we are presenting the content of the, this second part of language acquisition i just want to tell you that uh, 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 in this uh, in this uh, part two we are going to have just to cover two points the background of the behavioral approach and some basic assumptions now the behavioral approach as a theory or approach to psychology it's very common it's very known popular it has uh, emerged in the first half of the 20th century with uh, many theories and it has or it grew over time to 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 cover other areas related to uh, explaining how we humans come to develop our human behavior but basically we can talk about two uh, two theories uh, two theories one uh, sug suggested by uh, Ivanov uh, Pavlov this Russian psychologist, the second one by an American psychologist, B.F. Skinner. B.F. Skinner. Uh, first theory, it's classical, classical conditioning. Uh, con concerning this uh, theory, it consisted of the idea that an unconditional stimulus, in Pavlov's experiment, the food, produces an unconditional response, salivation. Of course, usually with Pavlov's experiment. So when presented together with the conditioned stimulus, the bell, such, such that salivation is eventually produced on the presentation of the conditioned stimulus uh, 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 since it become a conditioned response. That means we all know this uh, experiment of uh, the, the dog. Uh, what did Pavlov did? It presented uh, the meat to the dog with the bell ringing the bell at the same time. But with time, uh, Pavlov uh, retrieved the, the bell and presented only, uh, or uh, rang only the bell without the meat and uh, the dog salivated. What, this, what, what does this simply mean? It means that uh, 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 the process of conditioning is based on two other, let's say, uh, elements. On one hand, stimulus and response stimulus and response in between there is the process of repetition 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 so according to pablo we humans can develop our human behavior based on this process that is conditioning stimulus response repetition and through these processes we can develop any human behavior including language considering that language is a human behavior Later on, Pavlov's experiment and the classical conditioning improved to something else, to what we call the operant conditioning. What is the operant conditioning? In the operant conditioning, the emphasis on behavior and its consequences must respond to such a way to produce the reinforcing stimulus. The principle of operant conditioning applies to a very variety of situations to modify behavior one needs only to find something that is reinforcing the, uh, uh, the organism or the organic behavior, sorry, one wishes to modify. This simply means that 
when we talk about operant conditioning, there is addition of another element. What is it? Reinforcement. And by reinforcing, either we can uh, uh, reinforce to create a uh, developed uh, behavior or to eliminate uh, uh, a behavior. But the process is the same, usually the same. Conditioning, stimulus, response. Through this process, we humans come to develop any human behavior. Now, regarding the basic assumptions of behaviorism, uh, the first assumption, the first idea, is that uh, behaviorism implies that all mental processes should be overlooked from any investigation because this approach or this approach of this theory claims that internal mechanisms like thinking and intelligence cannot be objectively measured and quantified. This is the fundamental, uh, fundamental assumption with uh, behaviorism. Behaviorism, one of its essential basic assumptions is that it did not behaviorism it did not consider the role of the mind say the role of the mind it simply uh, refers to the mental internal mechanisms why because behavioristes believed that uh, the mental processes because they are abstract they cannot be quantified they cannot be measured and considering also that behaviorism believed in what we call uh, scientific rigor, measurement. So it did not, it did not pay attention to what we uh, think is abstract, mental processes, cognitive process. It considered only what we observe, what is observable, what is tangible, what is quantifiable, what is measurable. That's why it totally overlooked, say overlooked it means simply eliminated, eliminated the mind. This is first assumption. The second assumption, it's, 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 a, 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 a assumption of behavior, behaviorism, but regarding language acquisition. Uh, uh, based on behaviorism, based on behaviorism, behavioristes, when it comes to language acquisition, and here we talk about our first language acquisition, it considered the humans are born with tabula rasa. What is tabula rasa? Tabula rasa is a Latin term, by the way. It's not English term. It's Latin term. It means, in English, tabula rasa means a white sheet or a blank sheet. What does this simply mean? It, it simply means that behavioristes believe in the idea that human minds are like white sheets. And we humans are usually were born with a mind that is like a white sheet. And it is this white sheet, it's filled in, of course, with language in the course of time through the process of imitation, of course, after uh, another process which is exposure to this external world. The humans or infants at an early age, at the age of acquiring our L1, they are exposed, exposed to the external world. And then they are born with a white sheet, tabula rasa. And they get, they obtain language from the external world. This is a fundamental idea of uh, behaviorism regarding acquiring our first language. Of course, this, this idea was criticized by uh, uh, other uh, language acquisition scholars, mainly Noam Chomsky later on. We'll talk about this when we talk about cognitive, uh, cognitive uh, theory or approach to language acquisition. The, the third assumption about, uh, let's say, the basic assumptions of behaviorism, it's that people have no free will, which means that behaviorists believe that free will is an illusion. According to their view, behaviorist is humans are shaped entirely by their external environment what does it mean no free will people have no free will that means there is no creativity there is no productivity all what we obtain all what we developed as behaviors human behaviors including language because language is an example of a human behavior by the way behaviorist is called 
uh, language verbal behavior. They use mainly B.F. Skinner used the term verbal behavior to refer to language. He did not use the term language. He used verbal behavior. And free, no free will, that means we are conditioned. It's our environment. What environment? External environment that shapes our behaviors. All behaviors are created because of our conditioning to our external environment. That's why there is no, for them, behaviorists believe that we do not have, we people do not have any free will. This is the third basic assumption. The fourth basic assumption, this I explained it at the beginning, but I, let's repeat it, that behavior is the result of stimulus response. So all behavior, including language, is reduced to the association stimulus response or a simple stimulus response association. Again, talking about stimulus response association, we talk about the process of conditioning, conditioning, conditioning. So behavior is the result of conditioning. And this is the basic, fundamental, main idea, assumption of behaviorism. That's all for this part of language acquisition. Thank you very much indeed.